All right guys, today we're doing another build, but this is gonna be arguably the most practical build I've done in a long, long time. That's because today I am building a computer for my friend's mom, who also happens to be a grandma, so that's why I'm dubbing this the grandma build. Um, because there's a lot of thought that goes into these types of builds. In, in my opinion, it's harder to build a practical system than it is to build a top of the line system. Because the top of the line system, the parts are already kind of established for you. This is the top of the line. You go to that brand, that's the top, there you go. But this one, it's easy to overspec a PC for someone that would never use half the features that are gonna be in here anyway. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. NZXT's build is a quick and easy way to get a new gaming computer, and right now they're proud to announce expansion and availability to Australia, the Netherlands, France, and Italy. Build a gaming PC on your budget using the built-in configurator and see exactly how your favorite games will perform. Want to build your own PC but still have the NZXT peace of mind warranty? Then the new BLD Build It Yourself kit has what you want. Buy it and build it yourself and NZXT has you covered. To get started configuring or building your next gaming PC, visit the build link in the description below. So one of the requirements, not requirements, but requests was for the system to be able to update to Windows 11. Now you know Windows 11 requires either a TPM 2.0 or an FTPM if it's AMD, you know, to be able to uh, utilize Windows 11 because of the security features built into the OS. And all of that, if you don't have a physical TPM or trusted platform module in the system, which like pretty much nobody does unless you're running enterprise type stuff, uh, is all done on a UA UEFI level of the BIOS on the motherboard. So first and foremost, I had to pick a motherboard that was going to allow me to be able to run FTPM with AMD, regardless of what CPU was in there. So we'll start with the motherboard selection here. This is the Gigabyte, and we've used it quite a few in the past for like some of our super basic stuff. Um, this board has very light use on it because of the fact that, again, we've only tested it when we're usually checking out like, here's the cheapest build we could make, like 2018 or whenever we started doing this. But I digress, this is A320M H.2, from Gigabyte, and I did already look it up, and FTPM is already on this board. See, anything built in about the last five years, or in this case, Ryzen and newer, uh, is more than likely gonna have FTPM. It doesn't mean that it does, and just because the web, not the website, but the, the information I found says that it does, doesn't absolutely mean that it does. It might have a BIOS update available to it if we need to that will allow FTPM. If not, they're just gonna be happy with Windows 10, it was one of those like, does she need Windows 11? Is there, is she asking for Windows 11 because there's some reason why she needs it? And it was just kind of that mentality of like, well, it's the newest thing, so it's probably the better thing, right? And I had a few things to say about that. So I already had this conversation with my friend and if it doesn't support Windows 11, it's not gonna be a deal breaker, but this should hopefully allow that. Now, because this is a first generation Ryzen board, to keep it as compatible as possible, I'm putting in a First generation, first generation. There's the first stroke of the day. California Ryzen. I'm putting in, a, I almost said RTX, a Ryzen 1300X. So doesn't have an iGPU in it, which is perfectly fine because we'll be putting a discrete graphics card on here. Um, that way when they're streaming Netflix or any other streaming service on it uh, or watching any video streams, the decoder obviously um, is gonna be able to handle that. And obviously since there's no iGPU, we have to put one anyway. So 1300X paired with an A320M. That um, graphics card that we're putting in here right now is an R7 260X Saf Sapphire uh, card with two gigabytes of VRAM. Do I need to tell you this is not a gaming PC? Although this was a gaming card back in the day. This is because I want to know that she's going to be able to watch any sort of streaming service without any issues. Uh, RAM, this is arguably the most modern and overkill part of the system in my opinion. It's eight gigabytes of ballistic sport DDR4, 2400 megahertz. Um, to be honest, this is like the only eight gigabyte kit I had. <laughs> Everything else is 16, 32, 64, and now 128 with DDR5 and obviously, that is, could you imagine if I were to put like 64 gigs of RAM on this? I don't think 232 gig sticks would even boot, if you wanna know the truth. Uh, for storage, simple 480 gigabyte uh, BX500 uh, from Crucial. This is a two and a half inch uh, SATA SSD. And then for our power, I am pairing it with a Cooler Master, Master Maker, Maker, Master, Master Watt, and Cooler Master, Master Maker Light 500. It's, again, they're stupidest names ever in the world. This PSU has been used a couple of times ketchup and mustard cable. Still brand new, I mean, look at this thing. Because of the ketchup, ketchup and mustard, we've only used it for like testing purposes and such. Uh, in terms of when it was manufactured, it's actually older than my daughter. Don't let old fool you though. Power is power. Electricity hasn't changed since we discovered it. 
And then you can't put a cooler master, master maker, maker, master, master light, master maker, master box, well, power supply without putting it, or master watt, without putting it in the cooler master, master maker, maker, master, master light, master maker light box 3.1 TG. Uh, anyway, uh, we need to build this, so let's do that. I mean, there's, if this build takes me more than 20 minutes, send help because something went terribly wrong. <laughs> the first time I've ever opened this thing. So I'm already gonna change the case as if this wasn't already like, I, I, we just opened this out of the box and look at all these pre scuffs that are all over. It's been sitting on our shelf literally as long as we've had it in the box sealed up. I cannot give her, I don't care if it's tempered glass on this side. I cannot give them a case that is already pre scratched up. Wait, can you even see it? Oh yeah, it's all across yeah, the front. It's right pretty there. Obvious, dude. Oh yeah. Oh okay. Well, well, well then, don't you know? Cor well, time to grab a new case. Let's find one real quick. All right. So this is a Rosewell Challenger case. Um, never opened it. We've had this one now for years. I'm not sure if Rosewell. Rosewell is a Newegg's in-house brand. Um, back before Newegg became complete and other scummy scam artists. But anyway, I digress. No, I don't digress. They're scummy scam artists. Tell everyone you know. This case is probably bigger than we need it to be, but there's a reason why I chose this one. Y'all probably at some point either, why is there a VGA cover? <laughs> VGA co I just opened this for the first time. One of the things that uh, this person has and they wanted to potentially retain if possible was a DVD drive. And look, this one has five and a quarter bays. So I don't have a DVD drive, but we can put one in later if she gets one, because I think the one she has now, it might be an IDE cable. So clearly that's not gonna work with this build. You can even get her a Blu-ray drive too. <clears throat> Whoa, let's not overwhelm. <laughs> no, in all seriousness, uh, I think they make, uh, this, this is so much more like, industrially looking gamery than she needs, which is why it's awesome. There's not a single fan in here except for the 92 millimeter exhaust fan. Oh, and there's a 120 intake. Is that RGB? No, it's not gonna be RGB. It's gonna be maybe LED. If we can find us, I think they make DVD drives with a SATA interface. I'd have to assume, whatever. Back to the build. So shockingly enough, well, not really. I mean, everything works. Here's what's funny about this. I mean, short of the cables looking janky because this case uses a blue USB 3.0. This is ketchup and mustard. We threw in the green SATA because we felt it just went well with the era of the PC. But jokes aside, and I still have to get a DVD drive in here for at some point. Jokes aside, this 1300X, although dated for Ryzen, is still better than like, any FX CPU, honestly, in terms of clock speed and reliability. If we were to just throw like a 1070 or something in here, this would be a full on gaming rig. Like you'd be able to play modern games and stuff, no problem in this rig. That's what, that's what I love about this right here is this is like just so much more down to earth and grounded and, and, and well, it's grounded because electricity is on. But this is, this is very reminiscent and, and representative of what most people are dealing with here. Um, I'm just so thankful though that case manufacturers these days have moved on from the beige USB and HD audio and the blue USB 
and just about everybody has gotten rid of ketchup and mustard except for a few holdouts. But anyway, let's check something here in the, in the BIOS real quick. This is an old BIOS. Hey look, the battery is still not dead. Uh, this has got the right time on there. Okay, moving on. Um, it said it was in peripherals. Doom, there. So this can run Windows 11, just like it's, I was told it could. So it's funny because Phil was like, oh my God, because he wasn't expecting to see like, I mean, sure, this is a, this is a first gen Ryzen here, but 3.5 gigahertz, 24C by using the old, uh, this isn't a Wraith cooler. I think what they call this one, stealth cooler or whatever. I can't remember. Upgradable, obviously. 480 gigabytes gonna be plenty on this SSD. And uh, yeah, I'm not gonna touch anything here. I mean, the memory is already running at, look, the memory already went to 2400 on its own, not the 2133, which is nice. So this system is ready to rock. All I gotta do now is put in our install media for Windows 10, get all the updates in there, get the Windows 11 going, and uh, we'll be up and running. They wanna run Windows 11, so I'm gonna go ahead and update it to that point. But kind of a short one today. I'm glad it all worked out. I mean, remember when I tried to build my friend Chris a PC for him and all the stuff that went wrong with that one? I miss the good old days where it all just fit. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Comment down below with what your practical build is, whether or not you think this is overkill for grandma. I think, it's, I think we need to get grandma playing some World of Warcraft or something now, honestly. Maybe VR knitting.